So a few months ago, I ranked the tracks from the first DLC wave. Now I'm gonna rank the tracks from the second DLC wave. Same rules as last time, let's go. The SNES tracks were already flat and boring as it is. So why was Mario Circuit 3 chosen? Literally, I could show you a picture of the track and you can work out what you get from here. Or at least the other SNES tracks had stuff added like Underwater in Donut Plains 3 and Trick Opportunities in Rainbow Road. This track has literally nothing. The best part of the tour tracks based on areas around the world is how the route changes each lap. But just like Tokyo Blur in the first wave, New Dong City in the middle of the night really doesn't have much else going for it. Why is the track so slippery? You drift through a park, avoid park taxis, missed opportunity to have them moving as obstacles in my opinion. And on the final section you drive through a cinema. Decent enough track with some memorable locations, but that's about it. By the way, speaking of New Dong City, if the Power Moon Cup doesn't have a track based on Oddity, that would be a massive missed opportunity. From America all the way to Australia, Sydney Sprint is easily the best of the bunch out of the tracks based on the real world so far. There's loads of fun drifts to make, you get to drive through Sydney Opera House, and before tricks along the Sydney Harbour Bridge. I put this one over New York Minute for two reasons. One, the track is not slippery. Slippery? <laughs> one, the track is not slippery. And two, and this is the main reason, Is this the same guy who did the sax in Big Blue? He's bloody brilliant. <laughs> Coconut Wall is one of my favourite tracks from Wii. Mushroom Gorge was another one of my favourites from Wii. It was thanks to this track that the bouncy platforms became a thing, and this track is still the best for using them. The best uses for them has to be this opening shortcut, and this cave section which also kept the blue gliding mushroom 7 in. Nice addition. And following that, you can try for the ultra shortcut. Damn. I do love the gimmick of this track. However, I can't place it any higher because sometimes the bouncing can send you flying off. All we need now is Cooper Cave, and we've got a hat trick of best tracks from Wii. I wasn't actually very happy to see Calamari Desert come back because of, yeah, this. But this does have one of the best additions to any retro track in the series. The first lap's pretty standard, it's alright, you just go around the loop normally. But come the second lap and halfway through, you're on the train tracks dodging the train. Oh, shit, maybe not. So half the final lap is on the tracks. Well, it can be, but it's honestly the best way to dodge the train on the last crossing. But yeah, this made the track a lot better, and I hope we can see something like this for future retro tracks in the DLC, not just the tracks from Tor. Why is it so shaky? There, that's miles better. DLC GBA tracks have so far been an absolute blast to race on. Ribbon Road and Cheese Land are some of my favourite tracks in the game. And Sky Garden was the best track in the first wave of the DLC. Snow Land is one of the best tracks in the second wave of the DLC. Like with the other Super Circuit tracks, the track is no longer flat. There's been some great shortcuts added in, one of which can skip like a quarter of the track on 200cc. But these shortcuts were fun to pull off. I'm hoping Sunset Wows also gets this kind of treatment in the future. I mean, it's in tour, so we've got a good chance. Not sure what the popular opinion is on this track, but I actually really liked it. For stars, the whole track is in anti-gravity, and besides one massive exception, I've always really liked tracks that are full on anti-gravity. You can even spin off the rain into the SB boost for some reason. But the reason this track is so high is because for some weird reason, the whole track's in low gravity. Using this to skip parts of the track is really fun to do, especially with the numerous routes here and cutting this last corner off. It's really good fun and I hope future DLC waves also have a brand new track. Waluigi number one. I really don't like being predictable, but Waluigi Pinball was easily the best track in Mario Kart DS and it's easily the best track in DLC Wave 2. The reason I prefer the bikes in this series is because of the inside drifting, and these turns work so well for it. But don't think this track is going to be always like this, because I'm sure those pinballs are more aggressive here. And that's even before the main pinball table, where the pinballs and the bumpers can create total mayhem. There's never a boring moment here. I also really like how this track is presented. Its neon colour scheme is really nice to look at, and whilst the music is the same as Wario Stadium, I think it works even better here. In my opinion, this is now one of the best retro tracks in the game. Anyway, this is Bits of Inkling. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'll see you later.